Hello, how's everybody doing tonight? I'm DJ Michael Joseph, and this is Music and Mixing. Uh, it's going to be an interesting night tonight. I got a lot of cool stuff going at. I got a lot of stuff that I'm trying to pay attention to right now and see where everything's feeding at. I'm going to try to get as many questions as I can from as many places as I can. We are streaming everywhere tonight. Uh, in fact, we have even added, if I'm correct, my own personal um, Facebook page, but it doesn't look like it's going there. But uh, if you are watching tonight, uh, if you've never seen the way we do this, we usually start at the beginning. And uh, I basically just wait till everybody kind of gets in the chat room and do some shout outs. So feel free to do a shout out wherever you're from, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I will do shout outs to the best of my ability. Um, double checking all the feeds to make sure everything's going right. It seems like it's a little glitchy so far, but maybe not. Yeah, it's 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 a little glitchy there. Look at that. I'm 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 looking like I'm in the nineties. Let me let me shut a few things off here and see if it helps anything. But feel free to shout out in the chat, uh where you're from, all that kind of stuff. I like to say hello to everybody. We got a good topic tight, and I have a few things to say about the topic anyways. <laughs> so let me shut off a few things here, see if I can get it to come up a little bit better in the let me know if it's good on your end, if it's it's breaking up or anything like that. It seems like it's a little bit better now. It's not perfect, um, but it's better. So who do we have in the chat tonight? Let's see if I can see anybody in the chat. We have, uh, I believe, about 17 people or more watching already. Um, seeing what's all going on in the chat world. Yeah, it's still kind of breaking up a little bit there. <laughs> At least it is on my end, and I, I it may be doing that because I'm doing... Uh, two different directions on this, but let me know if um, what's going on with your end. I probably should have killed the other Wi-Fi on that. Uh, definitely holler out in the chat. Somebody out there who is watching right now, let me know what's going on. Uh, tonight's topic's going to be really good. It's about tagging songs, but like I said, I have a little bit more to say about it than just we're going to be talking about tagging songs. Um, see who we have in the chat area right now. I don't see anybody. If you're on Facebook right now, there's a good chance I probably will not be able to see your questions. So feel free to jump over to Disc Jockey News' YouTube page, which is uh, youtube.com forward slash Disc Jockey News. Um, GK, what's going on? How in the world are you? Glad to see you in the chat tonight. Like I said, as we do this, we always start out a little bit at the beginning and we say hello to everybody, maybe shout out where they're from, all that sort of thing. And then we get into the topic and questions. And like I said, tonight's going to be pretty good. DJ XTC, thank you for the shout out. Seems good there. Like I said, I think it was on my end because I have so many things running in both directions because we're broadcasting to, I think, 12 different places tonight, 12 different you know Facebook pages, Twitters, uh, uh, YouTube pages, etc. We're out there quite a bit in a lot of different pages. And uh, it just kind of was looking a little sketchy on my end, even though my, my feed is green here. Um, thank you, GK. Appreciate that. Anybody else in the chat wanted to give a shout out where you're from? All that sort of thing. I always like to see where everybody's tuning in. Um, DJ Johnny, what's going on? How are you? Hope you're doing well. Um, I haven't talked to you. Uh, been busy, all of us. You know, well, I mean, at least I try to keep myself like stupid busy, but you know me. Um, but definitely, like, definitely, we're gonna take a couple. Usually, take first five minutes or so and doing things. Charles, what's going on? Just definitely give me a shout out where you're from, so I can see where everybody's from. There, Peter. Hey, I know where he's from, Atlantic City. Hope we get to see you again this year, Peter. Um, I, with this craziness, I don't know. I mean, there's people saying that the Atlantic City DJ Expo won't happen. Um, I, it's gonna be different. Uh, Charles is from Nashville. Uh, it's been about three years since I was in Nashville, Charles. Uh, I went down there the year that the solar eclipse went on. I have a bunch of friends that lived down there and just kind of went down there and stayed. Um, Peter's from South Jersey. Uh, Colin, uh, East Liverpool, Ohio. That's not too far from here. Uh, GK's from Medford, Oregon. Dave Long uh, from Walla Walla. He said the video's looking good. Awesome. I love how you guys just kind of jump in there, and, and, and I appreciate it because, like I said, that you know a person of my age kind of understands uh, uh, what – used to be in the world like if i wanted to touch 
base with people in the world when I was growing up, I literally had three options to call them on a phone and hope they answered because there was no answering machine, uh, send them a letter or physically go to wherever they were at. But with this, we get to kind of be a part of each other's lives from just so far apart. Uh, normally on the show, we get people viewing from Canada. Uh, DJ uh, uh, Shawnee D is from Louisville, Kentucky. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, we get some people from all over the world. We get some people from South Africa that tune in from time to time. So I appreciate everybody. Like I said, I'm trying to see where all the chats are coming from. I think tonight mostly everybody's hitting me up on the YouTube page. Uh, like I said, if you are watching on one of the Facebook pages and you want to ask a question, please jump over to the YouTube page, and I will try to get the questions there. Because right now the feed, I'm not sure what all. I think it's picking up. 10 different chats, so I'm not sure who's from there. Johnny Cro Johnny's from uh, Boston, Mass. Appreciate that. Hope you're doing well up there. Um, did I have the phone on the wall with the crank? No, but um, my friend Eric still reminds me that my family was one of the first families to have touch-tone phones, which I, don't, I thought he had them before me, but he's like, no, you guys had them before we did. We still had the dial. So, yes, that's how old I am. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I think I'm doing good. I'm I'm keeping up with the technology, you know, the stuff. I love this stuff and I just dive as deep as I can into it. And tonight's going to be kind of neat because I'm going to take a deep dive into song tags. Um So what time is it here? It is Okay, it's 7 after, so I'm getting ready to start. All right. So, I am going to attack this from three different directions tonight. The first directions, I'm going to talk about three different programs that I use that are used by me in three totally different ways. So it's not just, I want to tag songs, I use this. It's three different programs for three different ways, depending on what I want to do. Um, the next section, because I'm going to do it in threes, the second one is why I tag the stuff the way I tag it. Uh, because I, I think I do things a little differently than a lot of people. So my way may not may not be your way, but hopefully what I'm showing you through the programs and through my ideas might help you with tagging and correcting song names and, and album art and everything. We're going to co cover all of that tonight. Uh, I'm going to show, obviously, some stuff in virtual. I was trying to get a friend of mine to get back to me about some Serato information because I wanted to hit the Serato people up with some information. But uh, most of the stuff, aside from virtual, it, you can use for any whatever program you use. It's just, you know... Fixing the name of the songs and stuff. And then the third part that I'm doing is uh, questions from you guys. So as I do this, I probably am not going to read all of the questions as we go along there. So please kind of hold some of them off um, till the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to talk about uh, why I do what I do. Uh, keep in mind that I'm building these tags and the way I'm going to show you because I don't do crates. Or I, don't, I do very few crates. If I'm DJing on a night, I'm not jumping into a crate for, you know, club, blah, blah, blah. I have a crate for that club. I don't do it that way. I keep it real fresh. I keep it wide open. And once I get into this, I'll show you how I do my searches for my songs. But I do, I'm able to do it the way I'm going to show you tonight because of how, um, how, uh, how, I, how I keep up on the tags. I'm, I'm a real believer in tags and, and song names and all that kind of stuff. If you keep that correct, uh, especially with virtual and, and as, as Serato changes with now with the play count, there's a lot of stuff you can do now uh, with, your, with just your categories and sorting and stuff like that. And that's kind of what we're going to go into tonight. Um, checking any more questions here. All right, so the first program that I'm going to do, I have to shut everything else down here, um, is one called, and I've been using this one, I can't begin to tell you how long I've been using this program. Uh, I, literally, it's been the, since the days of uh, DJing with CDs and transferring stuff from CDs. I, I've been using it that long. It is called DB Power Amp. I'm going to share the left screen here. Okay, there it is, DB Power Amp. And if you go to the website, it's just all one word, DB, as in decibelpoweramp.com. And uh, I think you can get a trial on it. Uh, it does cost for some of the things. They have a zillion different plugins for this. Like I said, as you see right here, the CD Ripper, I started with them, and th this one and the audio converter, and then later on added the, uh, where's the tag? Went at, the ID tag right there. And uh, there, it's very 
different than all the other ones that you might be thinking of. And you can also download, they have this thing called the Perfect Tunes, which is kind of like the second program that I'm going to be talking about that works the same to where you can do mass amounts of things and, and do a lot of auto search and auto correct, which I'll be showing you that a little bit later. But the cool thing about DB Power Amp, let me bring over the file over here. And now we have looking at files. So I'm going to go to the zoomed. There we go. So these are some songs that I'm going to be working off of tonight, okay? And the cool thing about this one is that DB Power Amp works 100% from right click. So if you're in a file system like this and you just want to do this song right here, you can right click it and then there's two there that work. Like I said, there's the convert to and I'm going to do a convert to and show you the convert to. So, oops, and put it on the other screen. So here we go. And you see how that it has the converter there. You can convert it to a bunch of different ones. These are the only ones I've downloaded, uh, but you can you can add as many different convertibles that you want to. You know things. You can adjust its its uh, uh, um, quality of the song. You can go into here and add different things like effects. Uh, you can uh, mess with the gain, and these are all part of the right clicks. So let's say this right here is an MP4. Uh, that I just right clicked on and let's say I want to make an mp3 and that's all I'm gonna do so for me to do that with this one all I'm gonna do is right click convert to and it, it always th always throws the menu up on the other screen hold on there we go and convert to and then I'm gonna convert and it's gonna put it right here in the file behind me in it as an mp3 so whoop, or did it put it somewhere else nope it's putting the screen over there yeah, yeah and that's working really slow tonight because I've got 101 things going on but normally that'd be zipping through there like really fast but that just converted an MP3 into a, uh, I mean an MP4 into an MP3. And you can take the same thing and then right click and uh, edit tag ID, which that opens up the menu in the other side again. <laughs> uh, two screens, let me zoom that down. And there's a lot of stuff here you can edit. And you can see that there are stuff in that file because the reason I pick these songs is because uh, I recently got an entire giant folder of 70s videos and holy crap were they a mess I mean a mess a mess uh, all lowercase all uppercase uh, words separated by underscores words separated by decimal points uh, spaces before apostrophes spaces after apostrophes just it was a mess and that's why I chose these and you can see this one right here it was pretty simple. There wasn't a lot messed up in the name, but there's a lot of crap in there. And we're going to kind of clean a lot of that up. But with this program, if you want to uh, mess with some of that stuff, uh, it, 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 again, it ties in markers and different things like that. But let's say you want to change some of these. All you have to do is click on them and right there and delete or change it. Uh, and then hit OK. And it's part of that, including adding the album art if you want to add the album art. And you can also add, whoops, I'm not showing that screen. There we go. Um, let me take a step back here. And zoom. Okay, so there. You saw I changed this one right here because that was, that was one of the ones that looked like this. And you can change it, edit it, whatever you want like that. You can add album art. And you can also add anything that you want to add in there. So if you want to add one of these um, uh, 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 areas so let's say you wanted to add something called a rating in there and I can click on rating and now it's added a rating column to it and I can add the rating but again all of this is done just from right click so if you want to just be able to do some of these really quickly if you have a single song uh, without having to open a program that's the cool thing about the DV power amp is just write uh, convert to and it opens up your thing and you edit right there again I'm gonna try to get the questions at the end um, but that's the first one, and it's it's the simplest. Um, like I said, uh, I've I've been using that forever, and it, like I said, it's good for quick stuff. So here's here's a thought that if I do an edit in, in uh, Ableton, Ableton only exports in waveform, and let's say I don't want to put the waveform in my music files, I want it to be an MP3. I can just right click right there, convert it, converts it to whatever I want, or a lossless file, or whatever you want, and then right there, and let's say okay, so I edited this, so obviously I edited the song in Ableton, so there are no tags in there. So if I really want to quickly go in there, right click, add the name of the song, add this, you know, the fact that I did it and the date that I did it or change the name of the song or whatever, I can do that all with a right click and done. And that's why I kind of chose that one. All right, so we're going to go, uh, oops, don't do that. Thank you. 
And the next one we're going to look at is MP3 tag, which I'm sure many of you have used. Uh, this is the website. The, it's uh, uh, out of Germany, but they have an English one. So it's mp3tag.de forward slash en. So basically, if you do a search on uh, Google, you'll be able to find this program there and download it. It is a free program, but you can donate if you want to and throw some change their way. They would appreciate it. Um, but it's really good. I like it a lot. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I use it for like big files. And this is what it kind of looks like when you open it up. Um, so over here on the left, you can, like as the song is highlighted, you can see what's going on there. And you can see how it's messed up. That, that there's a, it, it, It's reading it, that dash is being artist and stuff like that. So you can singularly uh, edit them right there if you want. Or you can go into and edit groupings or, or all kinds of stuff. But the cool thing about this one is that it has codes that you can enter for actions. So let's say you have, and, and again, that folder that I told you I was working with had a bunch of songs that had the number before, like they as if they were ripped from a CD or something. So one of the uh, actions I put in there is remove numbers, first numbers and dash. So I want to I want to, I want to show you this before I do that. Um, hold on here. Actions, because I don't want to do that one. I want to show you the action first. Um, oh, here we go. All right, so now you can look at it here up in the corner. Sorry. And the remove actions and dash, and I want to edit that. And this is kind of what the script looks like. It's it's nothing really all that fancy. You can go out and, and find them, copy and paste them into your own. There's other people that have them for them. But they're little scripts like this, and it's basically looking at spaces or anything else that's at the beginning. That's what this script is for. So basically, if I had a string of these that were all having the letters at the beginning, I would highlight them and then hit action and then remove numbers from the dash. And as, like I said, you're going to see this right here disappear. Um, action, remove numbers and dashes, boom, that quick. So if I had 20 of those, that quick they would all be done and, and over with. Um, right here, this one is in all capitals. I can go in and go to action, and, and one of the ones that already is in there is case conversion. So what it's going to do is it's going to look at those all capitals, and it's only most DJs do this. Again, it, I, I, the way I'm showing you these things is not the way to do it. It's just a way to do it. So do not... You know, get down on me and say, you know, why, why are you doing this, MJ? Because everybody kind of does stuff a little differently. This is my way. And like I said, that I'm, I want to show you um, what I do, and then I'll answer questions for that later on. But basically, it, it's case conversion. So I can go convert, uh, action, I'm sorry, case conversion, and it converts it. The one below it is the is exact same thing. It is the um, all lowercase, same thing, action, uh, case convert, converts that. Uh, this one here, uh, there was a lot in that lines that had a space by the uh, the apostrophe there, and I created a little action there for um, where's the UR? There's that one. So what it's going to do is it's going to look at that UR in there. Where did I just lost that one at? Right there. Uh, it's going to take that underscore out of there just by going. If let's say you had a bunch of songs, which like I said in this file I had a bunch of them. Actions remove underscores the UR, and boom, it's gone. Uh, one here, there was a bunch. Anytime there's apostrophe, so I put one for the apostrophe S for its because it always does that. So I did an action, underscore, apostrophe S, and boom, those are gone. There were a bunch that had, instead of having a space, they had a dot uh, in between. Same thing. Created a code. Remove, replace the dot with a space. And that one didn't work right. So I think this file screwed up. I'm not really sure why that one didn't work right. But the one below it has underscores, so action, underscore with space, and as you see there, it did that. So this one, I don't know what's wrong with the code with this one, but I can fix that later. But like I said, let's say you had 20 of those like that, and by using this program, you can quickly just hammer through 20 songs that have case corrections that are wrong, that have decimals in the wrong spot, different things like that. And that's kind of what this program is for me and how I use it is that I kind of go through there and if I have large numbers of songs, I do things like that. There is a lot that this can do to automate and look stuff up. Um, I haven't used that a lot on here because I tend to use uh, virtual DJs stuff. 
Um, but you can, let me go back over here. We want the left screen cropped. Uh, you can look for tag sources of cover art in all these different places right here automatically. Um, I think a couple of them you have to have to have a script subscription for. Um, but you can have it hunt all this information for you. So you can fill in a lot of stuff, as you see, and that's the purpose why I left a few of these blank, is that I'm going to show you on the next program how it fills some of these in, and you can correct them. But that's kind of what this one is. Um, like I said, these are the two that I do. Um, uh, uh, Somebody in the chat asked me this one. I'm gonna. I, I just decided to take a look at the chat real quick. I, I don't want to jump too far. Is this a Windows only? As far as I know, it's not. And I know there are ones for Mac. If there isn't, let me go back to this page right here, and let's go to the download. Let me go back to the bigger screen and go to download and see. Um, right there you go. It's got a Mac OS version, so you can do it with Mac. So that's cool. Uh, like I said, there's a couple, there's several like this. So, so if this one isn't yours, there's Music Brains Picard, and there's a couple other ones. This one's the one I like. There's Media, I think it's Media Monkeys, another one that does stuff like this. This is the one that I've always went to. And for the DB Power Amp, again, uh, I like I said, I look at them as, as different ways I'm working. So if I'm working with a song and I need to change something quick, I don't want to open another program to get to a song and fix the song. I just want it right there. So that's what the DB Power Amp I use it for. Like the other night when I got the whole folder full of 70s uh, songs, um, I wanted something that could take care of all of them really quickly. And, and the next program I'm going to show you does that. But I kind of wanted to show you this one because if you're not a person who uses virtual, this is an option for doing groups. But also keep in mind that the stuff I'm going to show you on virtual, you can do from the free version because the free version you can run for 10 minutes at a time and nothing. So you can go in and edit tags with virtual, and that's the one I'm going to go to next. But I want to first set up a couple things um, with virtual and what I'm doing with this. And like I said, I'm going to come back with all the questions there. Is that there are settings in virtual gobs amount of settings first off but there are settings that you can set prior to ever editing a tag that will help the tags you have populate and update automatically as you work with them and that's one of the first things we're going to talk about so we're going to go over here and we're going to show this one here this is virtual which one do I want I want this one here so we're going to open up we have the same bunch of songs here um, with the errors, as you see, um, where are my errors at? Did I fix those errors on all of them? I hope I didn't. No, they're there, right? Yeah. But you can fix them too. I think I don't remember which one I grabbed. I think I grabbed it because I put them in three different folders so that I would be able to edit on the fly. And uh, there we go. Okay, so that's good. So we open up the config menu up here in the right-hand corner. And it's going to bring up the center menu. Okay, and one of the things you're going to do is you're going to go into the options and tweaks. And this is where all the different customization goes. Uh, this is the ones, uh, these are all the settings, the things that you can set and adjust inside virtual. And that's why I like it because if you want anything to do anything or not do anything, you can go in here and make adjustments to any button, any action, any anything. You can make adjustments. So, um, one of the first ones we're going to do is because we're working with tags, we're going to put tag in the search. So it's going to give us a range of, of settings that have to do with just tagging. Uh, one of the first one on there is get tags auto. I put that on so that as soon as the song goes in, it grabs it. Um, the set tags auto is if I if this was off and I modified a tag with virtual, it would not save it to the ID3 of the song automatically unless I hit the uh, right to tag button. Because when you edit something with this, you hit a right to tag button, it saves it inside the, the ID3 tag. But if you have this set to yes, every time you edit in here, it will save it to that. And that was one of the things. Uh, you can have get title from tags automatically. So if you think the tags are good and you want to correct the title from the tags automatically as they're put in, virtual will do that automatically. If you're a person where you get songs from somebody else and you want the ratings, because some people use the rating stars thing, uh, you can do a lot of that automatically. Um, the get cues from tags is something that a lot of people don't really deal with because partially right now virtual does their tags, uh, I'm sorry, cue points, 
inside the database of the song. And I, I believe they're going to change it because a lot of other ones do it within within the MP3 itself. It puts it part of the tag. And I, I think that's kind of going to be the way the future is. So that's why I had that one set for um, the uh, Git tags always. Because if if you're using Serato or if you use virtual like Serato, because virtual also has um, flip a flip mode to it, you can download pre-flipped tracks or tracks where somebody has already put the cue points in. And if you have that checked to always, it will automatically put whatever that person at that place where you downloaded that song from, wherever they put them at, you will get them automatically. I don't like that, but I like to see them. So I leave it there. So if I get a song that's pre-flipped so that it's marked with juggle points or, or loop points or things like that, it's marked. But that's basically all that is, is that it lets you... Um, is that the right one there? There we go. And that, that lets you determine whether you want to or not want to. And you can get the key from the tag or let the program get the uh, one uh, the key. Um, you can uh, do the tags in the uh, um, the deck display, which kind of it, it cleans up the way it looks in the format and stuff like that. But there are a lot of little settings, like I said, within this that you can do. Um, the color picker is what we're going to talk about a little bit later too, where you can add color to the songs to identify them. And you can choose it, whether it be an auto color pick, simple system, and the system is basically uh, 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 prime colors. And then gradient gives you gradients of stuff. So you can pick uh, you know, 10 different shades of red for your songs if you choose to color them for a certain reason. And these are all, like I said, pre-settings that you set before we ever edit a tag. So now what we're going to do is we're in the program, and we're going to edit... Let me make sure everything's on the screen here so that you can see that. All right, so let me go back to here. And we are going to right click on this first song and we'll get into the tag editor. It's right there, tag editor. Boom. Let me move this over here so you can see that. And let me zoom out just a little bit on this one so you guys can see that a little bit better. Hold on here. I still want that to be nice and close in so you guys can see the whole th tag and what it does here. And this is the basic tag editor for, for virtual. And I, I love this thing. I use it so often. Keep in mind, you can do these tags as individuals or you can do everything that I'm showing you can be done as a group or an individual. Okay. So you're obviously going to have the artist name and, and, and the title. Um, as you see, that's backwards. Uh, so you can switch that up if you want. Um, you can do them automatically because you can name them from other things. Because as you see here, it's saying, hey, in the tag, uh, uh, this needs to be, you know, it, it's it's the other way. So I'm going to, I basically go in and if it's this bad, I either edit it with the other program ahead of time or I just copy and paste here and correct it. All right, so we've corrected that too. Um, we're The other c things that there was a, 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 check mark I didn't I didn't do in the check marks that will allow it to read so let's say this song had a it was a remix and it looked like this where it said remix or we will just call it uh, my remix so if you have that thing checked in the uh, um, config area what it will do is it, it will look at this in parentheses and know that this is a remix and it will automatically populate this in the remix section up here. I don't want it to do that. I want it to be in the name right there. That's why I do that. Um, but you can do that. The album can be in there. Um, you can put the remixer, the person who remixes it, the composer, the label. This is an interesting one because a lot of guys right now do not look at that and say, uh, it's a Warner Brothers song. That's the label. They label it as in, I got this from BPM Supreme, or I got this from Club Killers, or I got this from Promo Only. That's how they mark the label. So they know, oh, this is a Club Killers track. So again, each person does it differently. I usually don't put anything in there because to me, it, I don't care where the song came from, and I don't care what the, the record label is. None of that matters to me when I'm, when I'm DJing. So I usually leave that blank on there. Um, uh, genre, you can put the genres in, uh, year, obviously the track, if you feel that you want to do a track number, uh, grouping. This one I love because it allows you to group stuff different than the genre. So I can have a grouping that is simply called, uh, slow dance. 
and I put it in whatever songs that I want to put it in, and all I have to type in my search is slow dance, and every song that I grouped as slow dance comes up. The same for line dance. I have line dance that way. Um, what else do I have? I have a couple other ones that are like that. I have a sing-along section. So instead of putting those in a crate, I just tag the grouping uh, sing-along or slow dance. And that's all I have to type in my search. I don't have to go to another folder. I don't have to change my folders. All I do is type in the search slow dance, and every song that I had marked slow dance comes up in the first of the search and then leaves a section for everything else after that. So that's why I do that. And again, part of it, like I said, what I'm telling you is telling you why I do the things. The BPM, the cool thing about this one is it lets you half and, and double. So if you have a song that's 140, which you actually know it's 70, all you do is the half and it changes it to the half. Simple as that. The key also in the check marks in the config area, it lets you uh, get the key from the, the tags or it will let it populate via the program itself which I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do something else and come back and show you how it populates. The gain here, this area is for, um, Virtual has a thing called Auto Gain and Remember. And basically what it does is that the song, when it scans the song, which I haven't scanned these yet, I'm gonna show you the scan, so I'm just showing what you can do here. It will scan the song and, and it will normalize everything, but it's not gonna change the file. What it does is that it automatically changes the gain internally to make everything match. So you never, I never, ever, 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 ever touch the gains when I'm DJing. I use the auto gain to remember, and it remembers. And that's where it shows you it plus, minus, whatever like that, if it needs to say it's up. So it automatically changes the track's internal gain without changing the track to fix that. And that's why I use that. Again, all of these are just in the tagging area. Uh, you have the color, and like I said before, you can pick the colors, and then by having the gradient on, you can get the different shades of that instead of being just the prime ones there. You know, you could have whatever you want to in color that. I will show you that here in a minute. Um, let me turn that off. Play count, this is simply where you put the play count in. Uh, if I say, if I load this song brand new and say this is hot, I want it to go way up on my list, I might put something like 70 in there, and then all of a sudden it's now going to read as 70 in the play count. But I'm going to change that number since it's a 70 song, I'm going to change it to 50. First scene is simply the first time this computer has seen the track. Uh, first played is the first time you played the track. Last play is last time you played the track. Above that, I didn't do the ratings. Uh, this was the rating. You can rate one through five stars. Uh, comments, whatever you want to, and these can also in those in 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 our settings where we had the check marks, you can have it transfer the comments over or ignore the comments. So if I, you know, let's say you go to through one of the uh, download services and somebody puts comments in there, uh, you can have it when you download it, it either gives you what they put in the comments or it just doesn't load it. It's as simple as that. And then field one and field two. Keep in mind, uh, this lower line down here, the 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 play count. The first scene, the first played, last played, comments, uh, I'm not sorry, comments, but fields and field two is not something that is get written hard to the file that's seen within virtual. So if you have a 50 play count on with the way virtual does it, it is not locked into that song. It's only in virtual. If you have the first scene, that's not going to transfer to somebody else's computer and say first scene. It's only within the computer. So some of these are permanent that go along with the, the file in the ID3 track, ID3 file, and some are not. And then down here you can see the actual name of the file. Um, and then also you get to see where the exact folder structure it's at the file size, the bit rate, all this information. Now here's where it gets kind of cool with this, is that I can, let's say I don't want that to be the thing. Since I switched these, remember, and I want to change that, all I have to do is, I don't know, I think it's going to fit this in here, is click here, no, it's behind me. So let me move me over here so you can, whoops. I'm going to move me so you can see that pop out. So the pop out's here. And I can rename that file, not rename the tag, the actual file. I can, since I fixed it here and put my remix in there, I can literally name it the file, whatever I want it to be. And I want it to match the song's name. So all I have to do is go boop. And now the actual file of the song is titled that now. So that's one of the cool things. And the other thing is, is that there is stuff missing from it. And if you do the uh, discogs or however you pronounce that, you want to pronounce that, it will automatically hunt for information 
singular song or if you have a group of them highlighted. Keep in mind, because this does singular, virtual lets you do single or the whole thing. And all I do is click on it, and it goes out and tries to look for the information. It doesn't always get it, and also it's not always correct. Um, I think this would work better if I took the remix out of there and hit... Uh, it's all since normally it would have the right to if I remember I showed that check mark that where it automatically saves if that was not checked there would be a button right here that says right to so it did there so now I'm going to go back to disc discogs and see if it can find any information on that there and it is not finding that's why I said it's not 100% accurate but it can do pretty good finding stuff and one of the final things you can do up here is that it will search online for different album art if you want to and you can actually shuffle through things and pick different ones if you want uh, or you can add your own if you want like that so if I if I like some of these I want to change them and say I want this one this one is now saved as a thing so now the album art is right there and it will hunt it hunt it down for you oh it did it did you see there it it finally did go out and find the year that it was on and and it genre, it put the genre as funk and soul which you can change that if you want and that's one of the like I said one of the cool things here um like I said, the album, I don't give a flying crap about any of this. So 90% of the time, I delete that stuff. It, I don't I don't want it to be there. I don't even care. Um, but this is what it does. And then I'm going to color it so that you can see the color. And I want to make this, I'll make it blue. And so now if I want songs to be highlighted a certain color, it's highlighted. And then I close it out and hit OK. And now that song is now blue. And that's why I said it lets you change different colors. Uh, so that if you want to change to a lighter color, lighter blue, so that it's easier to be read depending on what you're doing, um, it will do the lighter blue there now, and it lets you change those. But again, these all can be done as groups. So if I want all of these, as you can see here, genre, let's say I want the genre in all of them to be 70s, I highlight all of them, right-click, tag editor, move the tag editor back over here, and you'll see in all of these different ones, it says multiple values, multiple values, multiple values. Um, I'm going to put in here under grouping 70s and hit OK. And now all of them will populate. Did it populate? It did not populate. Yes, it did right there, groupings. So it populated those. And you can do that in groups by whatever you want to, naming, groups, genre, whatever you want to do, you can do in groups. Um, a lot of times when these scan, a lot of this stuff fills in. Like I said, the key is, is normally right there, and it's not, so you would just scan it. Because as you saw, like I said, in the hustle, um, the tag, the key was not there. The key's not there because I, I do not want it to look at the tag for the key. I want virtual to determine what that key is here, uh, analyze for BPM, etc. And like I said, this is going to go really slow because we're <clears throat> I'm on an older computer here, my studio computer. It's not a multi, uh, 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 not a not a big processor with all the different uh, things. So it's going to go really, really slow here. I mean, trust me, this on a, on my DJ computer, it does four at a time. <clears throat> so it fills in information there, and it'll fill in the key and different things like that. And we'll go back to that now, and it'll show you the key tag editor and the keys in there. And one of the cool things about virtual is that you see this. Let me move this over so you can see this here and move me back down to the corner. Is that you see this column here, key difference. So if you want to DJ in key... The cool thing about that is I load the song here, and now it's going to show you here the key difference of every song in that line. So the next song is two keys off. This one is exact. This is one off. So let's say I emptied that, and I grab the second one there, which I know is two off, and it's now going to populate all of them, and so the two off. So all these things that you add into the tags, and that's why I say they're important to the tags, is that all of this stuff is searchable and, and and whatever way you want. So now I'm going to pick these three here, and I'm going to batch edit, uh, tag editor, and I'm going to genre them as pop. And also, they're marked as 70s. Okay, so I hit that there. So now I have genres. So I'm going to search all of these. <clears throat> we have the BPM range here, and I'm going to search all of these for uh, 70s. So what that does, that first search looks at the tags of the folder I have highlighted, because this is the folder I have highlighted over here. Oops, not in the center. Sorry. <laughs> so many screens. Yeah, so I have this, this folder here highlighted. So what it's doing here is all the songs that have either 70s in the grouping or 70s in the genre, 
get put up here first, and then the rest of my entire library goes down below. So you can do it by that. So let's say I want to go even further than that. I just don't want the 70 songs. This is where I'm saying the difference between me doing tags and you doing crates. This is where it goes into. So I'm in the 70s, and I see a couple years here. So let's say I want to do uh, 1973 to uh, 1975, and it's only going to show me the ones that are in that year range. And let's say I want to go in the BPM range of 60 BPM to 70 BPM, and it's going to show me only those. So instead of creating certain things like that, I do the genres and can go in and, and do stuff differently by doing that crate. The same with the slow dance. Is it slow dance? Yeah. So it starts grouping the slow dances, and I can also, if I wanted to do just those, and I can sort, and now all my slow dances are right there. Um, same with line dances. Now all my line dances are in there. And that's all I have to do. Instead of creating, I put genre or grouping or whatever I want to in there, and it automatically populates. And that's why I do that. So let's say I go in now and I do this thing for line dance, and I go, well, I'm in a certain BPM. I can then hit the BPM and sort the BPM wherever I want, sort it by BPM, but still it's only bringing up ones that are marked, only that are marked line dance. And I can even change that and go line dance. 90s. So now we're only looking at 90s line dances, or ones that I had marked that way. <clears throat> and that's why I say the tagging um, it is really important because it lets you search that way and kind of and kind of plow your way through that. Um, one of the important things you do need to do on this, and I'm going to go back here one second and then we'll take questions, is that if you want to, still again I have this all highlighted here, um, I can, I think I can do it from here during the whole thing batch and reload tags. So what it is, is that virtual is going to read the tags the first time that they go into the program. And since I edited some of those, I'm going to do reload tags. And what it's going to do, uh, I hope it does it only to these, because if it goes through the whole thing, we're going to be here for a while. Um, it should only reload what I've changed in those tags. So we're going to do reload tags, and it should have updated the tags. Uh, yeah, right there. You saw it populate. That one just popped right in there because it took it from the tag and put it back into the name. So whatever you change in there on the tag editor, um, it will then uh, populate it back out from the tag if you're doing reload tags. And that's one of the cool things I like about that. So that's why I do what I do. And it's, it's not the way everybody does it, and those are the programs I do. So I will take some questions here. Uh, we got a lot of people chatting tonight, a lot of people in here live. I so much appreciate that. Um, let's take a look here and see how far back I have to go. Um, here we go. Facebook user. Someone watching over on Facebook, thank you. All, all I got is Facebook user here, so I can't tell who you are. Um, we talked about the Macs as well. Someone says that they leave the file blank to... Um, uh, Mark's in Frankfurt, Kentucky. Appreciate that. Shout out to you. Um, I use virtual folders for that. Like I said, it's your choice however you want to do it because there isn't a right way to do it. A lot of people, like I said, they ask me, well, how do you, how do you create your stuff? How do you do your virtual folders? Well, virtual folders are a whole other way of pre-sorting stuff, which I guess I can show that too because that does have to do with the tags. And then I'll come back to the questions here in a second. So if I'm here... And these, this area right here is, is, you can download this from virtual. It's called My Library. And it's just a simple add-on that you do. And if I were to click here, and here's, here's your thing, and I'm going to go here to Extensions and type in My Library. And right there it is. Oops. No, because that's in Other. Um, it's an Other Tool. Is it a tool? Or what is it? Database filters. There it is. My library. Now, oh, this one actually has an update. So I'm going to update it right now. And that quick it was updated. And what it does is these folders in here are pre-filtered. That means someone created endless amounts of folders with filters to sort stuff automatically. So I open that up, and you're going to see database of live lists, artists, albums, and it's already sorted that way. So I can look under genre and every genre that I have in there at some point is marked and separated inside of these 
already. And again, it's kind of a crating system in itself, but this My Library does it automatically. Edits, you can look at My Edits, stuff like that. Extras, and one of the cool things in here is, uh, you can see your different groupings, your tracking labels, is, uh, which one is that? I always forget where that's at. It's under Database and Tools. And this one, under Database and then Tools, lets you, it's like I said, it has scanned all your tracks and has put in songs that do not currently have a key or a genre and let you look at that. And these are songs that have not been scanned on this, that they don't have a key in them. So it hasn't been scanned as a key. And you can pre-crate and use those crates. You can move those crates elsewhere. You can favorite them. Uh, so like, let's say one of those you want out here on the outer list. All you have to do is favorite it and it will drop it out here in the outer list to where you can have access to it whenever you want. Um, so let's go back here. Questions. Uh, Howie, welcome. I saw Howie finally jumped in there. Um, including artwork. Uh, I don't use the auto gain and remember, just leave it in auto. Um, auto gain and remember, the reason the difference between auto and auto gain and remember is that if I choose to change that auto gain, it will remember what I did. So it's, it's the whole thing works on a master slave. So if it's in auto gain, um, that means that if I change it, and go, no, this song's quiet, I want it up, and I change my gain manually, the next time I load the song, what I changed will not be saved. But the auto gain and remember will remember if I change that. So if you do want to leave it to where, yeah, I want it up this time, but I want it to go back to what it was next time I loaded, just leave it on the auto and not auto gain and remember. And next time you load the song, it will not remember what you turned it to. It will remember what the program determines it should be. Um, here and here... I'm a bit uh, about the tracks, but everybody rewarding at the end, and you won't have to give, do it again. That's the thing that when I load, I lo no joke. When I load a song, um, this is basically what I do. So I'm gonna uh, put a song in here. Let's go to left screen. So let's say um, I just downloaded this song right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this song when I download it is that I'm gonna scan it, analyze for BPM, etc. Then I'm going to go in and tag it. This is my order of doing things. Tag editor. Make sure everything's like I want it to do again there again. Uh, I'll put the album art in. I'm searching for the album art. Save the tag. Uh, genre, that would to me would be, I consider that disco. But a lot of people wouldn't. Uh, grouping would be 70s for me. The year, I don't know what the year is, so either I would look it up or I would make it go hunt it. So it's a 1988. Again, I told you. These are wrong. So I know for a fact that in mine, I have this song. So, um, uh, and its year is, uh, where are the years on those? I don't even know where the years are on those because I, I play the remix. That's why. So let's say it's 1978. So I made that 1978. Oops. Like I said, this is my process. Every single song, as soon as I download, as you can see, it changed the gain 0.84%. And let's say I want to play this a lot. I add the, the 20 to the play count. Um, usually nothing else I really do with that. So it's now written to there. And the next thing I do after that is I will load the song onto there and I will put my cue points in, like the first word, if I want to put the first word in there somewhere. So let's say that's the first word. Then I put my cue points in there. Bam, that's in there. And then do eight counts before. For my intro, I'm just kind of showing the way I do this here with this. And then continue on with all that. And then so now, this song is forever set. So the next time I load it, I don't have to screw around with stuff. So next time I load this song, the tags are right, the genres are right, the year is right, the cue points are in there. So I know that for me, this is the way I do it, for me, Q.4 is the first word. So I know if I'm mixing this song, I know that I have to be out of the other one by the time I get to Q.4, or I'm putting words over words. So, like I said, the day I download it, I do all this, and I never have to worry about it again. 20 years from now, let's say somebody wanted a song that I did 20, 20, not 20 years is an exaggeration, but you know what I mean, 10 years ago. And I, I said it right 10 years ago. So this is the first time I've ever played this song. As soon as I load it, all of the information is right, including the cue points. 10 years later, first time I played it, that's why I make the effort on that. Um... Do you put anything in between the commands, commas, or anything like that? Uh, 
Joe, let me know what you're talking about. Are you talking about invert? Which program are you talking about? Do I put any commas or anything in there? Oh, do you mean for the search? I think as you mean. No, you just leave a space. So this is um, my entire library sorted by play count, I think. I don't even know what, on this computer what's going on on this computer. Yeah. All right, so let me switch over here. Yeah, so let's say I'm DJing a song, and I have a song on there right now. Uh, let's say this song right here is Back That Thing Up, and that song is 95.7 BPM. So the first thing I would do is do a, a BPM range in there. Um, let me do the zoom in. Boop. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in. So the first thing I would do would be like 92 to 98. So now it's going to bring up every single song in my entire library because I have my DJ music recursive. That means that every time I click on this folder, it's going to recurse and check every Make sure that it's, it's checked all the folders. So the first thing I do is the dash, and that gets me every song, and I have it sorted right now by play count, within that BPM range. Then space and year, because I DJ a lot of college stuff. So for them, a throwback is 10 years ago. So if I was DJing the college crowd, I would do 2010-20, and it would only bring up songs in that BPM range, in that year range, and let's say I want uh, hip-hop stuff. So I would put Urban. So that brings up only the hip-hop songs that are in that range. I'm going to put the word pop in there because I my, one of my tags is pop. Pop meaning that it has been on the um, pop charts, Billboard pop charts at some point. And let's say I want to do a remix. So now this is only showing me the remixes from those 10 years in that BPM range that is a hip-hop song that has been on the pop charts, and this is the remix version. So instead of putting all that in a crate, I just type that in as I'm DJing song by song all night long. That rhymed, and I did not mean it to rhyme. Sorry. <laughs> so that's, again, that's why I tag all this stuff, because it's just crazy what you can do with it. Um, uh, why would I adjust the gain if Virtual DJ adjusts it? I, there's some days you just on certain systems, things just don't sound right, and I'll tweak a little bit. Um, I've tweaked back, too. It, it all depends on where you're at and stuff. Okay. Blending is a thing that I do a lot of. So blending is stuff that every single knob, gain, high, low, mid, and filters, I do just a transition between two songs so that they that they match as well as I want to. Whether I want to change it to a different key, instead of doing an automatic key pitch in the program, I might change the high-low mids to bring it a little bit closer so that it's not so far off key, throw a filter in so that that key difference isn't as harsh. Or if one's coming in strong and the other one's leaving soft, I, I soften the one that's hard out a little bit so you know that it, it comes in a little bit smoother. And that's why you would change some of that. Um, MJ, I find... I find if you find the correct artwork for the song using disc dogs, it will f seem to fill in. That makes sense. A lot right there what you just said. He says that he finds that if you put the right album art in, it will hunt for that. I know for a fact that many nights when I'm tagging songs and uh, there's like some crazy remix that is, it'll say something like BPM Supreme, uh, Bobby Joe Killer Mix. Um, it won't find any information. It will not find album art for that. So I have to go in, highlight that whole line of mix, edit, take that out, copy, delete, so that I still have it. I can paste it back. Search for the album art. It will then find the proper album art. Then I can paste that such and such remix, blah, blah, blah back in there. And now I have the correct album art and the correct uh, remix name all in that. So there's there's ways that you work through that. Um yeah, so is the space there. I never put more than one thing in the search at a time. Now I know you can search multiple parameters. Yeah, that's one of the things that I always say about virtual that, that blows people away. I'm not saying don't use crates. If you like crates, by all means, use them. I have some there for certain situations because uh, it, sometimes it's easier just to find stuff. But when it comes to general mixing that I'm DJing, because I DJ clubs and bars, so I'm DJing top 40 stuff, hip-hop stuff, you know, an oldies thing would go back to the 80s. So let's say I'm in a, in a little area. Maybe I want to throw back to some 80s. I'll put 80s in my search. Instead of going to an 80s folder, I can put the BPM range that I'm at, 80s, and see what I come up from there. And if I want an 80s hip-hop song, I made 80s. If I made a pop song or whatever like that, and then that just automatically kind of just files stuff in where it is that fast. And that's, again, why I kind of use that. Um uh, what is the purpose of putting number one, uh, something other than zero in the play count? Good question. As you see here, these are sorted by play count. So let's say I get a new song here. We're going to go into my uh, DJ music folder. 
And um, I, it's been a couple weeks since I've updated this, so please forgive me. I've updated it since the fourth month. And as you see, because we've been in, in, in lockdown, none of these have any play count. So let's say I go back, and um, this Megan the Stallion song is something that I know I'm going to play a lot of, and I want it to come up faster in the search. Um, I'm going to throw this up here just so we can kind of see what it's doing up there. So I'll go in and tag editor, and I'll do 30. Oops, sorry, not there. In the play count, 30. And it saved it. So now that's showing 30 in the play count. So let's say I do a search for, this is a 2020 song, so I'm in the BPM range of 82-88 um, space uh, 2018-2020. And uh, now I'm looking at stuff just by doing that, sorted by how popular it is. So now that that has 30 up there, that's coming up on the list first. So that means I'm looking at it going, yeah, I play that a lot. That's at the top of the list. I'm, I'm going to see it first. So I'm going to say that. Or if it's early in the night and I'm doing that same sort of search and go, I don't want to play stuff that's super popular, I just scroll down into some that I haven't played you know, a lot and grab one of those. That's why I put the, the higher number in someone because I know I'm going to play it a lot, and I put it in there so it comes into the search when I do the search like that at the top of the list. But you can change the sorting however you want. Just a little simple click, you can change the sorting however you want. You can sort it by the keys so all your keys match, whatever you want, switch them back and forth. But that's why I do that so it pops up there quicker for me when I'm doing my search. So let's go back to the chat here. Uh, have you ever trusted uh, Media Monkey for ID3 tags and other? Like I said, I've tried it. I prefer the MP3 tag over the Media Monkey. I have nothing necessarily against Media Monkey, but everybody has things they like, and and I just like the MP3 tag. I have a friend that likes the uh, Picard Music Brains over the other three, which it's great too. But it just kind of you know, it's it's a personal preference, whichever you like. Um, uh, Joe Best, thank you. I'm, I'm glad I was able to help. I, like I said, uh, I, I'm, I was going to mention at the top of the hour, uh, if you saw the way I posted this you know, on my Facebook page and stuff like that, that this is one of my most asked topics. This is literally, no joke, the fourth video I've done about song tags. So if you go onto Disc Jockey News' YouTube page and search within their videos, song tags... There's going to be multiple ones that I've done. I've covered the same thing multiple times. So I advise you that if you have a topic that you want to know about, not necessarily you know program related or mixing related, it can be wedding stuff, it can be DMX, it can be sales, go into their YouTube page and type in the search and you will see all the videos over the past how many ever years, because I've been with them, what, five years now, that someone has done on these topics and some of them are longer some of them are shorter uh, like if someone did that search right now for this this is an hour long one but I have one in there that's five minutes long so if you don't want to watch the hour one you can watch the five minutes where I just zip through it so all of that stuff is in there um, another question come in here uh, for the software that you covered do they have a tagging option to where you can just click tags to a song rather than typing tags. That's where, like I said, if you go back and watch the video, you, you do the group searches on some of those. Like I said, virtual allow you to do the group search. Um, I did that when I told you I had that folder that these, I'm telling you, I have no idea what this person did with these songs, but every error that could be in a song name was on this list. And I just had to go in there. And then once I got them correct, I put it into virtual, highlighted all of them, use that uh, Discogs thing to do the group search, and then it filled in a lot of information that I didn't have already. Um, it's hard if you don't even have a file name in there, an uh, artist, a title. That's going to be tough because there really isn't a lot of programs. Let me, let me rephrase it. There isn't a lot of programs aside from the ones that they use on social media to bust us for copywriting. Aside from those, there isn't a lot that will just listen to a song and tell you what it is. Um, you know, put it, put the information in there, which I don't know why there isn't, because if they have that ability to to bust me for playing a song on Facebook, uh, I should be able to have a program that that just goes through the file and tells me this is the name of the song and fills in the information. I don't know why there's not something out there like that. And if you have the ability to create that from their algorithms and power, you're going to make a lot of money because a lot of people would want that. Um, I have a question. Can you search for cover art? for multiple files, or is that one file at a time? I don't know. Let's try that. He's wondering if I highlight a bunch. So I'm going to go with this screen, I think. 
and we're going to go back to that folder of other stuff. Let me close out my big giant folder thingy there. Um, all right, so these are the ones that I was working with. And we're going to highlight all of them. Tag editor, batch, nope, sorry, tag editor. And we're going to click on album art. I don't think it's going to do that. Now, it'll put that for all of them. But the, the interesting thing is that if I do highlight all of those, this is the thing that I didn't show you guys. I probably should have. So let's say I have this list here, and I want to do, let me shut this down. And I click the first one, and I do tag editor. I can edit all the stuff in here. And once it's done, I hit next, and it takes it down to the next one. I don't have to leave here. Edit my tags, get my album art, next. Takes it down to the next one. I can just go through that way. I do not think it's going to search by file name on all of them, but let's do let's do this. Let's let me highlight a few of these. Hold on here. Let me highlight a few of these. Tag editor and then let it search from the disk dogs and see what all it finds in that grouping of songs. As you see, it's searching for stuff there. And it searched a bunch of stuff. So hit that there and let's go in back into the singulars. It put album art there. No album art, no album art. It put a year in on that one. No album art, no album art. So it did not do that. Um, like I said, the Discogs, I'm finding that to be air, has a lot of errors in it. Uh, it's not perfect. But it'll at least get you close because if you have a bunch to go through, like I said, I'm telling people that you're in your break now. You're not DJing out. Go look at the songs you play, like especially if you use virtual and now with Serato and, and, and Recordbox, you can see the play count. Go look at the ones you play. And if stuff's not right, now's the time to fix it. Just while you're sitting there watching TV, type in a year, do whatever. And, and by the time you get all that done, when you go back out, uh, your searches and stuff are going to be uh, uh, just like instant. Like I said, that's how I do that. Um, another question here. We're running past the hour, but I'm going to keep answering your questions because I have a feeling that tonight was going to be a, a hot night of questions. Here's, do you tag moods of the songs? I don't tag moods. I do because I have stuff. I have a section not, not in 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 the um, grouping called aggressive and they're like really like kind of banger kind of like hard 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 stuff i have ones that are that are in grouping that you know it might say 70s but it might say 70s horns so they're songs that have a lot of horns in them so if i want to do a saxophone song after a such and such song i do have those in the in in that section of groupings so that i can group stuff like that but i don't necessarily have it like uh, 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 laid back as opposed to this. So that kind of goes in the genre sometimes. Chill out, house, uh, down tempo, blah, 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 stuff like that kind of goes in the genre, and I can kind of feel that. But like I said, 90% of the time that I'm DJing, I'm DJing uh, at clubs and bars, so I'm hitting top 40, whether it's old or new. I can, Like I said, there's nights I go out and I'm playing Journey and then playing you know, uh, Drake right after it. Um, but I kind of, like I said, I do that. I you know, can type in that, that long string of search for 70s, do a couple old songs, then do a bunch of new ones, and then do the something else to here, and then do something to this. And that kind of lets me be free to where I'm not sticking to the same folder, playing the same songs all the time. I can look at that, do my search for that string, and see that I've played these a whole bunch. I, I'm going to give them a rest for a couple weeks, scroll down to ones I haven't played a whole bunch via play count, and play those. And and, and I just like sometimes that I'll look at a song, go, I haven't played that in a while, and I know it's going to be good, and I'll take the play count from like 3 to 25, and then next time, two weeks later, I'm out DJing, do that search, and I see that high up in the list. I'm going, yep, we're playing that tonight. And then that becomes a song people, you know, obviously, you know, as a DJ, you know what songs play, but it puts it up there in your memory a little bit here. Um, you can put remix in the title. A lot of times the remixes are in there because I also will do a search for redrum. And a lot of times if it's a remake of a song that someone else sings, I will put remake in the genre. So it might be 70s house remake. And it's, it's, it's that way, my way going. that It's not the original. It's a remake that someone did. And remixes are put in there. Like I said, remix, 90% of the time, why I leave the bracket. Remember I showed you the bracket at the end of the song, such and such remix, quick edit remix. I leave that there because that is also found in the search. So if I type remix and in that song title, in the brackets, it says remix or Mamba Tone remix. I can search for Mamba Tone remix and it will search up in that. It will come up in that search again by whatever way I sort, which I sort 90% of the time by play count or stuff like that. Or like I said, or groupings. Um, yeah, I, that's the thing that uh, uh, Joe said in there that it's a powerful software that most people don't take advantage of all of its abilities. Um, 
like I said, if you just, you're on break, so what are you doing? What what are you doing? Like I said, I'm sitting. I have a day every single week that is on my to do list that I I go through my music library and I just exactly sit in there and go all the songs that don't have a year, and then I go by the ones that I play a lot. So if I have a song in there that doesn't have a year and I've played it thirty times, it's getting a year. I'm correcting it so that it has a year from now on I can search. And like I said, my groupings are done by decades, too. So let's say you have a 70s party. In my groupings, I have 70S. So I can type in 70s, and everything that is 70S comes up, or I can do a search for 1970-1979, and it will bring up those. In the same way, like I said, I have it up, and I'm now into 20s. And what worries me is I have a couple songs in there from the 1930s. So in 10 years, I'm going to have 30s and 30s. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to do the 2030s separate uh, from the 3030s. So we'll see how that goes. But like I said, it's just something you can do, and now's the time when you're on break that you can dig into the stuff, especially for some of you wedding guys who play a lot of the same music. You can maybe mark stuff that you will go, you know, this version I like to play at this type of wedding, and this version I like to play at this type of wedding. Put that in the comment section or put that in, in, the, in, in the grouping section so that when you next time you go, I'm here, and you can't remember what version that was, you can just type in that little catchphrase, and it will bring that up quicker so that you can able to find those songs quickly if you want to drop them in and out quick. So, yeah, we're way after the hour. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad you guys like this. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it, like I said, uh, someone in the thing said he spent five hours yesterday um, about that stuff. And like I said, there is so much that you can do with this. Uh, don't overwhelm yourself. Just give yourself like one day a week to do it. That's all I do. I don't, I don't overwhelm myself with it because it will drive me crazy, make me hate music. So just do a few at a time, and before you know it, the main songs that you use will be there. And then once the main songs you use are set, then go back and grab some old ones. Go, hey, I'm playing at a place where they seem to like the 90s. So I go back in, and I look for 90s songs that I haven't played in a while. And I'll go, oh, here, let's put this up in the count. Or I know this song is from the 90s. It doesn't have a year in it. I fix the year. So sometimes you just kind of fix by different stuff like that. Um Yes, uh, it, uh, 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 Jay Sean, look at the beginning of the video, and I talked about, not the beginning, but it's like partway through, that virtual lets you either click a button, depending on how you have it set up in the settings. So you can go into the settings and click a choice in there to have the button to write it when you press the button after you've changed it, or I have it checked to where it automatically, so when I change it, it automatically writes it to the tag. And you can choose that if you don't want it to automatically write, you can set it to where don't automatically write, and then it gives you that button to choose if you want to write or not write. But like I said, that's the thing with virtual with all the different settings. There's so freaking many settings. You can dig in there. There's there's so everything that you wish your program could do, your controller could do. I want this button to do this a little bit different, or I want this. There are settings for that. So um, someone did 772 song tags. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I couldn't do that many. I forget. There was three. The, the 70s folder that I did had 360 some in that folder. And that's what I dealt with the other day was was fixing 300 and some that were wrong. And as you saw, the little pieces of what was wrong with them. So um, last time, any questions? Again, thanks, everybody, for both on the Facebook side, the YouTube side, or anywhere else you're watching tonight. Because, like I said, this was on pretty much, uh, I think, 10 or 12 different places. And I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, this came from, I did a post, uh, I asked people what topics did you want me to do, and this is one of the topics that came up. Um, like I said, I've done it four times now, so please don't ask me to do that again. <laughs> Go back and watch the other videos. One of them, Like I said, one of them is a five-minute video, so if you don't want to sit through the whole thing, I go through the same information a lot quicker, a lot less information. So you guys can check that out there. Um, so... Uh, Yeah, like I said, there's there's different settings for how you want to do that. Uh, each one, that's why I try to get my friend on the phone today to ask a little bit about the way Serato runs theirs, if they do anything special with that. But I, like I said, Virtual's Tag Editor I think is incredible. I love it. It's it's my it's it's my go-to, and it's going to be my go-to for years, um, or as long as people will let me DJ. I don't know. I'm getting old now. But again, thank you guys so much for this. I appreciate it. Do not forget to click the like button, hit the thumbs up, share this video. If you're not a subscriber already to Disc Jockey News, please subscribe to Disc Jockey News. And also, if you are kind of feeling closed in and you want to talk with other DJs, every single night, 
Dish Jockey News does a chill out room that you can go and hang out. It's a Zoom room that you can go and hang out. It's not where people are playing music and being crazy. It's just other DJs sitting around in a Zoom room BSing about everything from cars to food to music to life to whatever. And it's simply DJNTV.com forward slash chill. That's all you got to do. DJNTV.com forward slash chill. And like I said, every single night, 8, 9, 10 o'clock, whatever time Brian S. Red opens it up, uh, and it's his birthday, so make sure you go bombard him today. It's his birthday. Everybody go bug him and say happy birthday to him. Um, but it's all in there, um, and you can just go hang out. So those are all options that you can do right now within the world while we're still kind of stuck. But try to take advantage of every day and make the best you can of it to whatever way you can. And again, thank you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. It's a crazy world out there. And keep your head up because we all are going to be back to doing this regular soon. We are. So hang in there. All right. God bless.